Hey explorers, welcome back to our channel. It's Paul and Anna here from the Explore Couple. We're here today at Fremantle Boat Hire with Nate. Nate, thanks so much for having us today. Can you please talk a little bit about yourself and about Fremantle Boat Hire? Yeah, thank you guys, appreciate it. Sure, well this is my little business based in O'Connor. Um, I've got four boats. Um, by far the most popular is Merv. It's been around the Perth waterways for a long time. That's the one you guys will <laughs> take out today. How exciting. Um, yeah. Five and a half metre um, forward cab as well as the bow rider, 5.3 metres. Have a tinny, 4.3. So yeah, quite a wide variety of boats. Yep, yep. Um, amazing. Yeah, going to Rotnest, going to Karnak Island, Garden Island, um, Swan River, the wineries. Anything's possible. So cool. All right, we'll take you guys with us today and yeah, show you guys the boat. What's up guys? We're down here at Woodman Point Boat Ramp in Coogee, Western Australia. So we're here with one of Fremantle's um, boat hire. So this boat behind me is a 5.5 metre velocity. Um, it's called the Merv. So Nate, from Fremantle Boat Hires offers two options. So you have the tow and go, which is what we're doing. So you can pitch it up to your car and you can tow it to any boat ramp you want and drop it in the water um, wherever you like. Um, we offer a walk on and walk off service. So you can um, you can have the boat in the water for you, ready to go. So all you have to do is just rock up to your preferred boat ramp and then you can walk on the boat. And then when you come back, he will, he will meet you at the boat rep and then he'll take the boat out of the water and he'll tow it away for you. So yeah, have them two options, guys. Thanks. If there are witnesses, they will remember this. It's beginning, sky is falling down. I can feel it. So the weather has cleared up a lot now. There's still slight wind, but it's pretty calm. The ocean is such a remarkable place, isn't it guys? But we must make sure that we respect it, keep it clean to protect all our sea creatures. I actually have a huge fear of the ocean. There were many times where I was on the boat with Paul and we've had some crazy situations and it got to the point where I was like, shaking uncontrollably but after going on the boat regularly and learning about the safety features and just a bit about the weather like checking the wind stuff like that and having the right gear like your life jacket etc you start to get used to it and it's just like anything else hey everyone so Meet Merv, this is Fremantle Boat Hire's largest boat. He also has three other boats that you can hire, including a little dinghy as well. Okay everyone, so this is the front of the boat here, the bow roller. So this supports and feeds the anchor rope. Um, you've got grab handles up here, as well as along the sides of the boat. And as you can see, Nate has repainted the boat here in honor of today. So thank you, Nate. 
this boat is powered by Mercury Sea Pro, 115 horsepower, four stroke. All right guys, so I'll just show you the climb down ladder. It's a foldable ladder, so if you're diving or swimming, you can fold it down like this and easily just come back up. Make sure you lift it up when you're back in the boat and that it's secure so it doesn't hit rocks, etc. So it's such a beautiful day today. We're just out on Fremantle Boat Hire's 5.5 metre velocity boat. I'll just show you the helm. So at the front of the boat, you can see this is the driving section. There's a steering wheel and shifter. Up the front here, we've got a compass, as well as a navigation system, Garmin. So Nate actually told us this morning that he is slowly working on this boat, so there will be a full restoration done to it inside. He's already started painting parts of it on the side here. I'll just show you. See? But there's still a lot of work to be done on the floors as well as at the front where the helm is. So stay tuned. So the very first boat that we actually had was a small dinghy and we had so many cool experiences on there. And because it's so small, you just feel like you're so close to the water. But on this boat, I feel really safe. And one of the features that makes you feel extremely safe when you're in the helm is these protective covers here. You can actually open this one here some fresh air as you can see there's a roller thing here and then you can unclip it and zip it all up but yeah like when it's rainy and really windy you honestly don't even feel a thing you're protected and yeah this boat is just awesome we're actually thinking of getting one of those protective covers for our boat so stay tuned guys Okay everyone, so I'm just going to show you the life jackets and where you can find them. So if you ever feel like you're in danger, the weather gets a bit choppy, you can put on your life jacket. I'll just demonstrate how we're going to do that. So the life jacket's in this red bag. And here is our life jacket guys, that's what it looks like. So to put it on, you turn it around and you stick one arm through here and your head obviously through the hole. Then what you do is you reach over behind you so that you can clip the life jacket like that. And then to tighten it, you just pull on this string. Okay guys, we've also got a VHF radio here and you need to have a VHF radio license to use one of these legally. And over here we've got the Fusion stereo system as well. And there's also um, some storage up here as well. So you can leave practically anything that fits in there. All right, everyone. So down here, you'll find the SPS 50 sunscreen provided by Nate. So make sure that you use that before you go outdoors to protect your skin. And down here, he's provided us with some brochures at some boating guides and a bit about marine safety on Rottnest Island, etc. Okay, everyone, so I'm just showing you this little orange donut at the front of the boat. Oh, sorry, the back of the boat here. So if someone's struggling in the water or they're at a distance and they need help getting reeled in, you can just toss that orange donut into the water for them to grab hold of, and then you can uh, reel them in. Okay, so I'm going to run through some of the safety features. Just so as Anna mentioned previously, this is a VHF radio. You do legally need to have a license to be able to operate one of those. Um, but obviously, if you didn't have a license and it was an emergency, just use it. It's better to use it than not to use it. Um, but basically, what you do is you jump on channel 16, and then through there you can contact the um, local authorities to to help you. So. I'll give you some scenarios as an example. So if your if your boat's broken down and you're just stuck out in the ocean, then that is not a life-threatening emergency. Um, in that case, what you need to do is you need to jump on the radio and you need to repeat pan, pan three times. Um, so they know that it's not a life-threatening situation. 
But if your boat if, if your boat's taken on water and it's sinking, then that's a that's a mayday situation. So you need to jump on the radio and call mayday because your boat's taken on water and you need help as soon as possible. Um, also, if someone's had a medical medical episode like a heart attack or something, then that's a mayday situation also. Um, but if, if you're cruising along and you hit into a rock or something and your boat's taken water really fast, don't even use the radio, just jump straight onto the EPIRB. So to use the EPIRB, what you have to do is there's a little latch on the side here. You just got to click that and that comes open. And there's a little tab down the bottom, so you push that down and you pull this down and out. So down and out like that. And then what you want to do with this is you want to point this to the sky as hard as possible. Flip this yellow tabby and then pull down on that and that would automatically send a signal or send help to the local authorities. So either your sea police um, or your marine rescue or in some cases a chopper but most likely a, a sea rescue boat will come out when you're on the water. Um, but I only use this in a life or death threatening situation else you can get fine. Okay guys, so I'll just show you a little bit around the boat. So up the back here we've got the um, there's a chopping board so you can do all your filleting, um, you can do all your baits here. There's um, a can holder on each side, there's rod holders, four rod holders at the back there. Perfect for fishing. Okay, so down the back here we have a live bait tank, so you can put um, salt water in there, you can have um, live bait for fishing. Down here we've got a stool here, so you can actually pick this up and move it around to where you want. Um, when you're picking up the boat, if you don't want that on board, mate, we'll take it out for you. Down here, he provides an esky as well. He gives you an esky of ice, which is awesome. And then plenty of storage down the side here too, guys. You can put all your um, your spearing gear or your or your rods or just any loose items can go in this, down the side. Okay, so this boat's got full shape from the front, from the front all the way to the back. So if it's you know, if it's raining or if it's a hot day, it's perfect for that. We'll keep you out of the elements because yeah, as well for people that don't know, Perth sun is bloody, it's hot, it's, yeah, it burns. Um, also there's grab bars everywhere, so if the water gets rough and you're sandy, you've got plenty of places to grab onto. Grab bars here, there's grab bars behind the chair, um, and on this side too, there's more grab bars, so you can stand and not go flying off the boat. Okay, so under these seats, we've got some more storage. So if you've got stuff that needs to stay dry, like clothes or towels and stuff, you can put it all in there. I'll keep everything dry. There's cup holders over there as well. So it's got nice rubber floors, so it's really nice on your feet. It feels very clean to stand on. And yeah, it doesn't it doesn't hold any water, which is good. And then under here, there's also a live well, a live well tank. So you can see if you catch some fish, you can keep them fresh and alive until you get home to kill them. So that's really cool. So the boat carries six people or 450 kilograms. But everyone, so Paul is just about to set up the drone and do some drone content. I'll just quickly show you guys the beautiful crystal clear water. It is paradise here. <laughs> Garden Island is one of our favorite places to go. There goes Paul. All right guys, come along with me here and we'll show you how Paul flies a drone. So this is the only spot in Garden Island that you're allowed to fly the drone. So make sure you know your rules because you can get into trouble for flying where you're not meant to. Oh yep, there he is. So 
Okay guys, so we're down here at Karnak Island. You can see the beautiful blue water. Very beautiful spotty. And then over to the distance. Over to the distance over there, you can see some sea lions are all asleep at the moment. Okay, so I'm suited up and I'm gonna go swim over to visit the sea lions. I'll take you guys with me. I made it. I don't want to get too close, but they're actually asleep right now. Aren't they just beautiful? So these are sea lions. Get back on the boat and using the fall down ladder. We grab the handle here. And then you use this handle. Okay. Get back up, hey, easy. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and give us a subscribe. Yep, and um, we just wanted to say thank you to Fremantle Boat Hire for the collaboration. We'll definitely recommend your business. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, Nate.